Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So, as you can tell by the title of this video, we have a very, very large winter storm blizzard, I should say, on our hands. Now, let me be clear. This thing has uh, a very good potential to be a historic winter storm or a historic blizzard, meaning that this thing, if really any even scenario that many different models are showing, any one of them comes true, this thing will go down into <coughs> history as a, uh, as, a, as a massive winter storm. It's going to be historic. Now, I want to say that so, <coughs> there are still a few things that are unclear about the situation, right? Uh, it's becoming more and more likely at this point, I would say very likely that this thing will be occurring. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that this will be bringing snow into the, uh, the United States or even Canada. It could take a track off the coast that limits its impacts. That's also becoming very um, more and more uh, unlikely pretty quickly. Uh, the vast majority of models, I will show you in just a minute, and a rhetoric from the National Weather Service point towards a, <clears throat> a very massive uh, winter storm that is, again, has a very good potential of leaving historic amounts of snow across the Northeast. So, I know I don't often make videos with such, <clears throat> I guess, um, seriousness because this thing is not something that's going to mess around. It is a, um, it's, it's a historic system. It could be the storm of this winter, if not the past few winters. Okay, so uh, this thing definitely could be comparable to storms like Winter Storm Jonas 2015 and that type of magnitude, how big it was, the once in a decade system. Um, so yes, this is, this is just massive. And let's just start talking about this. I want to start showing you, uh, you know, the info and the evidence behind why I, I think so. Again, it's not just hype. It's you'll see the models yourself. And if you do know a thing or two, you'll be taken aback by it. Okay, let me start off by saying that uh, if you guys are new to this channel, hello and welcome. Um, check out the video, obviously. Watch the whole video. And if you do enjoy, uh, you know, end up enjoying this content, consider subscribing and liking. I'm saying this at the beginning. I know you haven't had a chance to watch the video yet. But, um, you know, at the end, I always forget. I get too talked up about the weather. So I'm just saying this now. And, um, yeah, I'm not a professional meteorologist. I, uh, on this channel, I always direct everyone to their local National Weather Service in the United States and in Canada, it's Environment Canada uh, that you should refer to for your official weather info because mostly, almost always, whatever I show here, the National Weather Service agrees with and any trends that I see, usually they see, um, obviously as well. Okay, so uh, let me let me uh, also add that if you have any comments, leave them down below. I'll do my best to answer them. Okay, <clears throat> let's start off by showing you all of these uh, models. Right now, I'll try doing this in a compact version without going too fast. But we, <clears throat> the, the thing is with this system is that there's so much to cover. This video may be a bit longer than I would like, but we'll see. Hopefully not. So what do we have right now? Right now, you know, people, the first question is, okay, this thing's historic. This thing's massive. Where? When? How? One at a time. Let's go through this. And this is why it's important to watch the whole video. You won't get a good scope of what's going on just by watching the first few seconds of this or minutes. Um, and I do want to say that if this were to occur, it will be affecting mainly the eastern United States. Really? And, you know, that could be, um, I guess, more specified to the eastern coast. Where now, obviously, this winter storm where it will not be just bringing snow to all locations. The southeast could be impacted by it, but by its rainy side, right? It's important to note that. In city are areas like Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, New York, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Vermont, and Maine. Those are the main states that will be impacted by this. So there is your who. When this thing, if it were to occur, is um, starting late Friday into this upcoming Saturday of this upcoming weekend. So at this point, I would say start preparing because um, the chances of this going away are much, much lower than this thing getting even stronger. And, um, you know, it's um, I'm not telling you to hog uh, supplies or whatnot or to panic, but always being prepared and being aware <clears throat> is the wise thing to do. And of course, you know, this isn't something that will stop, you know, the world, it will end the world, whatnot. It's no, no doomsday disaster here, but it is a significant winter storm. It's not a regular foot of snow for many. It could be a lot more than that. Okay, enough of the chit chat. Let's start going over this. 
<clears throat> and let me start showing you the ingredients necessary to form this. What we do have right now is plenty of cold air, but just no real moisture to kind of use. Well, this all quickly changes. You're going to notice we have a little cold front. It's actually a very powerful one. It delivers a, pat, uh, a pack of very cold air from the north. Um, you know, you may be seeing, saying, how cold can it get? Because a lot of locations today are under cold uh, wind, wind chill weather advisories and whatnot. It's very cold. And, you know, this one won't necessarily make it colder, but it will keep, I guess, the same severity of cold around for quite a bit longer. What that does do is for even some large cities like Chicago or in northern Indiana that could drop uh, quite a bit of lake effect and that's definitely something to watch for. So again, you know, that's already uh, something to monitor and I know I do have viewers from Chicago, quite a bit of them, and I do want to say that um, for uh, for your area, it looks as if there could be a, a decent good threat of lake effect snow. Now again, this will be mainly just localized to the, the county right by the Lake County, but Friday, it's definitely something to watch for. There could be some significant lake effect. Right now, let's start showing this because you could see this little disturbance at cold front by itself <coughs> is rather measly. Brings a little bit of snow into Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, but look at all of this moisture to the south. At ahead of this trough, where there is this moisture, right? This trough gets uh, extremely powerful, and <coughs> this moisture pretty much times itself perfectly with the uh, with it being on the southeast quadrant of this trough which is right here. And here is, coincidentally, where the winds are the strongest in the atmosphere. What this allows is for quick development of <clears throat> a, a storm system and a precip to get kind of picked up by it. And let me move this forward because, uh, very slowly, because here's where things get chaotic. So this is <clears throat> late Friday afternoon. You may be in um, <clears throat> Virginia just seeing a little bit of light snow, nothing big. For now, look what happens by Friday at, um, really, it's a Saturday. Friday, midnight, Saturday, midnight, I think it's technically Saturday midnight since it's the 29th. And look, we start seeing signs of a powerful system already strengthening. Heavy snow potentially into South Carolina, North Carolina. You're again, relatively heavy for your location. Um, you know, what's heavy for Boston isn't heavy snow for uh, Columbia, South Carolina. There is a good threat. You could get several inches, I would say six plus for many of these locations. Now notice, this is where things get interesting. I'm showing you one model. Some between that one image I showed you, take this little pressure and put it more towards the north. You can see the GFS takes it more towards it north and east. What does this mean? This has big implications on cities like, or areas like, um, say, Delaware. They're stuck in more of a light to moderate snow. Where while it is, it's still a significant storm. It's not historic because it's a bit further towards the east and it doesn't deliver those extreme snowfall amounts or, or snowfall rates. Now, do note, the winds are very powerful at this point. Not only do we have a low pressure here, we have a high pressure to the north, creating a wind gradient that is, again, going to be supporting easily a blizzard condition, um, if not, um, yeah, I mean, blizzard condition, because there's nothing really worse than a blizzard condition. Um, and I think that it could be for even areas that are pretty far towards the south, uh, meaning, you know, southern New Jersey and whatnot. And again, you don't need a ton of snow to create blizzard conditions. You just need snow and poor visibility. And with some of these rates and that wind, you know, it's it's definitely going to cross that. Okay, 6 a.m. Saturday, you're waking up, you know, the good silver lining of this thing is it's occurring on the weekend. I mean, that's probably the best thing about the storm. Look, look what happens. <clears throat> Within 12 hours, it goes from being a 989 millibar storm to a 975. So, this thing is quickly intensifying. It is quickly deepening. It has very heavy snow at this point across much of New England. Um, it's still tapering and uh, lingering snow across Virginia, Delaware, New Jersey, Connecticut, Rhode Island is getting the brunt of this. And look what happens here. This thing kind of stalls out. It stops moving. And within the 12 hour period from um, Saturday to Saturday in the evening, Boston's under very heavy snow. So is much of Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont. And some models, by the way, bring this much closer, much further off the shore, much stronger. There's some variations to this, which is, again, why I am still trying to, you know, we're all still trying to wrap our heads around what exactly <coughs> will happen. But whatever it seems at this point will happen, it's, it's going to be bad. <coughs> and you can see that this thing does quickly kind of get away once it, um, I guess, reaches... <clears throat> main and it does uh, weaken a bit so by uh, so by Sunday and Sunday in the morning and afternoon this thing is gone and in the evening Sunday evening you're getting ready for work uh, on Monday hopefully you know you're not like completely clobbered in you're by this a storm it's going to be done at least you're not you're not gonna be dealing with anything um, other than the cleanup because the total snowfall well this is the thing you can see the GFS just stopped us at hour 90 let's go to this weather model or website and I'll show you the same model I showed you and I'll just take a look at the snowfall models because we could actually take a look at them here 
So again, there's our beast, there's our system, um, and uh, let's take a look at the total snowfall accumulations, assuming a Cuchera, which is kind of the, or the more estimate, or the more accurate snowfall ratios. And look, this will be significant for North Carolina, right? You can see up to 8 inches into Virginia, Delaware, New Jersey. You could get almost up to a foot, so that's still not a bad event. But that pales in comparison to what's even pot potentially what Long Island could get. Maybe New York City. Again, you're right on the cusp of this. The, the GFS right now is currently favoring Boston with, I mean, ridiculous amounts of snow. And portions of Maine seeing 30, 30, you know, maybe even 40 inches of snow. Again, ridiculous amounts of snow. Now, I do want to say that the GFS has been a bit less consistent, uh, consistent than I would like. You're gonna notice that today at noon it's it was pretty consistent with what it shows now, so that's good. But the more we go back, you can see yesterday or today at six o'clock in the morning, it was much further off the coast. And y y uh, today at midnight, so at this point, you know, many hours ago, it it was similar, but it didn't really show much snow across uh, the Virginians or North Carolina. It, it showed still a lot of snow across that main. Now let's go back to 24 hours ago and what it showed. Still a big system, right? That's why I made a video about this yesterday, but it was mainly off the coast. And at this point, it has uh, inched its way closer. So, this is what I'm trying to say. The GFS paints a bad scenario, but I think there is uh, a few more models. It really, there are a few more models, I should say, like the European and Canadian to have a better, better handling of the system. And I think that scenario is more likely. So, without further ado, let me show you these scenarios without uh, trying to keep you guys back. So... By the way, these scenarios from both of these models are worse than a GFS. So if you think the GFS was a monster storm, get ready. Get ready because that is honestly probably the, the best case scenario if you don't want snow. Um, and yes, as you saw uh, looking at those amounts, that's not going to happen either. Or depending, or that's not going to happen even, even with the weaker GFS ensemble. Look at this. So <clears throat> we see the, the Canadian model, right? This is a very good model. Yesterday, I couldn't show you the up-to-date data because it had an error, if you recall. And let's show this. So again, there's our cold front. There's our southern piece of energy. You can see right there. These two couple very quickly. And by, uh, again, very early <clears throat> Saturday uh, and extremely late Friday, this thing's already producing rain across potentially Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina. But it does start producing snow as well into northern portions of North Carolina, into Virginia, the Mid-Atlantic. And look, this one hugs the coast a lot more. So what that means is heavier snow rates for Delaware, <clears throat> uh, Maryland, potentially. New York, uh, New York City, um, really New Jersey, and even into again maybe South Carolina. And look, if you recall, what the do you guys remember what the GFS did? It took the system a bit towards the north and east. Look what this guy does. It not only brings it to, towards the north, so closer to the shore, but it explodes. I mean, this is a bomb cyclone. It drops 24 millibars of pressure. I think the criteria is 24 millibars of pressure in uh, 48 hours or 24 hours. At this point, it doesn't matter because it could be dropping that within 12 hours, according to the Canadian. And, um, yeah, that is fierce, fierce, fierce winds. That's going to cause a lakeshore flooding, and that could be a very significant threat because of how strong those winds are. The blizzard conditions will be full force. And notice, this thing continues dropping. Do you see what I'm saying? The, the, the Canadian paints a historic scenario, without a doubt, of a millibar of 952. If you don't, you know, if you're a weather, avid weather enthusiast watcher, when you see this, this is something you rarely see. I mean, very, very, very rarely you see this type of stuff. And if you're not used to the weather and you don't know what 952 is, I guess the best comparison I could tell you is that Category 3 hurricanes sometimes have that mill, uh, have that uh, pressure reading. And you know how Category 3 hurricanes sound significant because it is. This thing, what I'm trying to say is, if it does come true like the Canadian shows, it's definitely historic, unfortunately. Because this thing will definitely have massive impacts that aren't good. Look at these winds. They, they continue. <clears throat> and while it may seem it's weakening, the winds are strong. The snow is powerful. And this thing, again, by Sunday, still is already gone. So regardless, the timing is at least <clears throat> relatively agreed on by the models. The snowfall from this thing <clears throat> would be obviously a tremendous. And this is assuming a 10 to 1 ratio. It will. It won't be. It will be much higher than this for some locations. So, in order to show you the more accurate snowfall ratio, let me take a look at the Canadian model. But on this website, it's again, it's the same model, but it's more accurate snowfall ratios. And what we can look is that look, it shows significant snow across Virginia, Delaware, Maryland, uh, you know, New Jersey, potentially New York, seeing almost a foot, so a bit, probably a bit under with this scenario. Because still, Connecticut, Boston, getting targeted for the heaviest snow. Um, and Rhode Island, you know, well, potentially over two feet, and into Maine, uh, getting a bit lighter amounts, if you will, but still a, a massive system. So that's the, that, 
<clears throat> that's the gist with the with the two models, the Canadian and the um, and the GFS. But let me show you one more model that I think has a very good handling on it, and in fact, probably the best handling of them all. And that is the European model. I mean, that is like the pride and joy of the weather community. It's usually referred to as the most accurate weather model or in terms of global models. Whether or not that's true, it's debatable at this point. It doesn't matter because all three show a massive system of historic potential. So there we go. We see that cold front, right? We see that moisture from the south. And I do want to note that, by the way, the first part of this is producing a little bit of snow across potentially Colorado and Texas Panhandle and New Mexico. There could be up to three, two to three inches across Amarillo and what's not the Panhandle of Texas tonight. So that's, that's kind of tied in with the storm, but not really. Um, um, no, it, yeah, it definitely is tied in with that southern piece of energy. And um, notice that, <clears throat> again, the timing, relatively similar. By late Friday <clears throat> to Saturday, this thing's already uh, exploding. Potentially uh, thunderstorms, rain across the south. Again, we see that snow. <clears throat> threat starting to explode and look at that we see very heavy snow a bit heavier than what the other models are showing across delaware say right it doesn't show as much more uh, snow into north carolina as the other models and again look at that 989 millibars of low pressure and by saturday morning this is now saturday uh, mid-morning hours so 8 a.m right it shows very, very heavy snow across much of the eastern seaboard. You can see that the millibars are also very low. Um, not as extreme as the Canadian, but still uh, pretty uh, stronger than what the GFS shows. And it's closer to the shore than what the GFS shows. You know, you're seeing hours and hours of very heavy snow. And you can see <coughs> that by Saturday... Uh, 8 o'clock in the morning, this thing's already going, um, you know, it's pounding uh, much of the eastern seaboard. And look at this, 973 millibars. Again, very, very low storm in terms of pressure. Obviously, what does that mean? Well, the lower the pressure, the stronger the wind. So some of these winds could be, um, you know, damaging by themselves. And if you get wet snow, even just dry snow on top of things, you're not only creating blizzard conditions, but you could get down trees, down power lines. Um, thankfully, it's not an ice storm but it's a winter storm but still look at some of these uh, snowfall ratios or rates very very heavy topping these out at probably three to four inches of snow per hour and again this thing starts early saturday for many meaning around 1 a.m to you know three and is ending um late saturday early sunday so overall it's a decently quick system um you know but um i guess that's a saving grace look at that 967 very very low we're extremely heavy snow occurring at this point and then this thing is out of here now i do want to say that you know this is still relatively far away but i, I do think that at this point the chances <clears throat> for a a, 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 a kind of a blow off of the system or being a complete bust are quickly diminishing um, and let me show you the snowfall mounts with the European model this one only shows the 10 to 1 ratio for the European which again I warn you is a bit inaccurate some of these will be much higher if I, to, if I were to apply the accurate one and I will do so in just a second but just assuming a 10 to 1 which is a heavier wetter snow and it won't be in this case Look how much snow it shows for Delaware and Maryland. Much, much more than the Canadian and GFS. Still shows way, you know, a lot of snow way further towards the north. It's just that it shows a lot more towards the south. Again, these amounts are legendary. Look again, some lake effect on the western shores of uh, the lakes. A bit unusual, I do want to say. <clears throat> and obviously, a lot of the United States, if you're not dealing with the system, will be relatively dry, but uh, very, <clears throat> very um, cold. Now, I, I remember how I told you that I wanted to show you the 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 european model so that's why i just showed you but i want to show you it's um <clears throat> it's um i want to show you it's uh, what am i trying to say it's a Kuchera snowfall. It took, me a, it took me a little bit right there <laughs> to say that. And I showed you the 10 to 1 ratio, but I want to show you the Kuchera, which basically estimates the temperature at, with the snow, uh, at, at what the snow is falling at. And it shows us <clears throat> a more accurate kind of fluffiness of the snow. You know how sometimes you get, you know, three inches of very fluffy snow, where you can move it really easily. And, you know, uh, that moisture content of that snow is very low. But sometimes you get two inches of very heavy wet snow, and then obviously, you know, if you were to get that, that heavy snow, same liquid, but in fluffiness, it would obviously accumulate to a lot more. So this is the European model. I showed you its run, and now I'm just showing you its Kuchera snowfall. So look at these amounts. Again, this is the European, um, which is, by the way, usually considered the most reasonable, most accurate model. Reasonable, because a lot of the other ones, Canadian GFS, have had their fair share of kind of showing insane systems. But in this case, it's the European that's being the most aggressive. And I don't think this is um, not warranted. I think this is a pretty good estimate of what may happen. 
let me zoom in on this region because I don't know if you're seeing some of these numbers, but these are darn ridiculous. Potentially anywhere from Maryland, and New, uh, New Jersey, I don't know if it'll be 40, but let's just say two feet plus potentially from uh, Southern Maryland all the way up through Maine. And again, you can see that this one has New York City at over two feet. However, the Canadian and GFS had them only at around six, you know, six to 10. And I say only, that is still a very big event, a massive one, but it's nothing near compared to potentially I think that's his 27 and I think the record for New York City stands at 27 at 28 so potentially again record breaking for some areas and obviously that would be for Delaware I mean 40 what is that like 50 inches almost that's probably a bit too extreme but it just shows you the potential of the system and these winds will be just wicked so I showed you three individual models you know that's, that's a good estimate of what may come if they all agree relatively on a historic system this far out, which is kind of a medium time frame. But let me show you ensembles, right? This is, these are a bunch of models that are <clears throat> squeezed into a family. This is the GFS family. And basically, if all of these show something, then that means that there's, there's good support, right? But if, say, the GFS shows a storm, and I take a look at these ensembles, and none of them show a storm, then the GFS may be a bit less um, accurate, or it casts a bit of doubt onto it. And you can see there's 31 of these. And here's, here's what's <clears throat> really leading me to thinking that the GFS ensembles aren't as good uh, with with handling this system. So if you recall, all the three major <clears throat> ones I showed you <clears throat> are showing a, um, a a winter storm, a big one. Now there were differences, but let me take a look at these ensembles and show you their predicted total snowfall, their snowfall footprint. So it doesn't show the actual snow, but through our 132, which is Monday of next week, which again, by this time, <clears throat> this storm will be over. A lot of these models, interestingly enough, have, are just showing the storm clipping portions of Maine, okay, right? You, there, you can see there's quite a bit. There are a few that show the system not even occurring. So that is already a, a pretty pretty big uh, disparity. And there are a few that show the system more of what the GFS kind of uh, control model shows. So you can see the GFS are a lot less confident. And if you were to just take a look at these group of ensembles, you might really uh, not even uh, you might you know you might not even see the threat of a big system because only one shows really what most of the other models show or one of the ensembles, and let me show you why I think that this kind of disparity between the models is the exact reason why I think these are less accurate or have a less uh, worse handling on this. So again, you can see quite a bit. I mean, this whole topper almost doesn't even show a system that's significant. This one does, but it's just really clipping Maine. And some of them, uh, really one, really just shows like that all out in Eastern Seaboard uh, too, I would say, uh, Eastern Seaboard snowstorm. Now, let me show you at another ensemble group because no, that's not the only group that I could show you. I could show you a way bigger one, you're right, the European ensembles. Now, these are considered to be a bit more accurate than GFS, and I do think so as well through my, through all my years of looking at these. And there are <clears throat> 51 of them. So 51, and you know that if all 51 show a storm, it's going to happen. Now, usually that's not the case. There's always a few that outlie, or at least uh, um, there's at least a decent portion because it's very hard for something to agree on 50. It's basically like the Senate, right, in the United States. <clears throat> if the two sides agree on something, you know that something's up. <laughs> you know, it's basically that, uh, it's like, like, like that same thing with with these weather models. They bicker, they, they argue constantly showing different sides of the storm, and if they both, you know, they all show very similar uh, results, you know, that there's definitely, you know, that's extremely eye-catching. So, let's take a look at these ensembles, and let me run them through. So, this is five-day snowfall ending Sunday at around noon, right? So, this isn't, or I guess, the full length of the system, but for the most part. And let's see how much snow some of these show. So, the first one showed a system. This one shows a massive one. This one takes it just a bit off the coast. So, again, you can see there's a bit of disagreement. This one, again, massive system, massive system, massive system. Um, right there, uh, you know, massive storm, but just a bit further off the coast. That's, again, a beast. This one's a bit weaker. So, again, that's kind of the first one that's a bit weak. Again, we've had a lot that were uh, in agreement. Again, this one shows a big system, <clears throat> but it's nothing like the GFS that just shows, you know, or GFS ensembles that show the just main getting clipped. Again, now we're seeing a couple of them that are kind of, you know, with the weaker scenario, but there, there we go. We're so <clears throat> right back to seeing a massive storm. There's one that doesn't agree as well. There's one that does show a storm. There's another one. There's another one. So you can see there's like, for every one that doesn't show the system where it's off coast, there's like three or four that do. There's a lot more, in other words, consistency with these models. Let me just run this through. Notice, 
I mean, there's, uh, again, I just went through like four that agreed, very similar tracks, and then there's just like one that's it's still significant, but just obviously not legendary. There's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. You can see there's differences. Some show a ton into Virginia, some more along the coast, some more into the northeast. But again, you can see that the European ensembles are a lot more in agreement than the GFS, which leads me to think they have a better handling on this. Now again, there are still obviously a few that are, that are a bit off. Um, and again, even if a scenario, I don't want to say a scenario like this were to occur, where let's say like this one that just clips the the, uh, the eastern uh, seaboard extreme coastal areas with the heaviest snow and you know New York City Boston would still probably get around six uh, maybe eight inches so still a big event in an event like this this system you could tell by its snowfall footprint further off the coast would still be a massive beast so <clears throat> the winds would be beyond powerful so that would definitely still warrant a blizzard because it's not based off how much inches you have and the the waves <clears throat> the lakeshore flooding may be a big concern with this thing and whether or not this is further off coast or you know on coast with such strong um pressure readings it would have to be way off the coast in order for it not to have an impact so it's it would still be a very very impactful storm if a scenario were like uh, like this to occur and obviously if you have a scenario that's closer to the shore especially one that's pretty much you know right at like, that sweet spot for a nor'easter where then you will have uh, potentially devastating impacts um you know not just oh cool a lot of snow uh, potentially devastating with such heavy amounts and again you can see there's a lot more agreement amongst these models compared to some of the other ones with the gfs where, again um this is assuming <clears throat> a 10 day uh 10 to 1 liquid uh, ratio which again if you saw some of these they show a lot of snow right but it's not 24 inches plus in many and that's because it's a 10 to 1 ratio and the snow will be falling at a lower ratio so you know take 17 inches 18 here in connecticut at 10 to 1 but with the accurate snowfall because this will be falling at a colder temperature than 32 probably around 20 21 22 th this you could multiply that by one and a half so 18 or you know 20 times one and a half and that's why some of the models are p pulling up to 30 inches in some of these locations and i do want to say that uh in regarding the <clears throat> long ranger is a uh is a it's a good threat that the, there could be a big warm-up following the system for the northeast coast. I know that's that's the last thing you want to hear. But uh, there's another thing that could, there's another storm that could be impacting, but more of the Midwest. And that's something to watch for. It could also be a very big, significant one. Obviously, the confidence is way lower because it's further out. So you can see the models are all over the place. But a lot of them are painting this pretty good axis of heavy snow between the 30th of January and the 4th of February, which again pretty short time frame but they show a lot more western u.s activity and potentially the snow swap across the midwest you can see that one shows a big beast big beast of a storm you can see this one does as well this one does this one does too some of them further north some of them further south you know we'll have to wait and see look at that one that would be a legend for legendary storm for the twin cities if that were to occur um and again just different scenarios all over the place but yeah regarding this first one guys this thing it looks it looks potent it looks powerful massive so that's pretty much <clears throat> all i wanted to cover i gave you a good look at what the <clears throat> three models are looking at the gfs a bit weaker and a bit further off the coast still a significant if not you know massive system uh canadian just shows a historic system G european so does uh, it as well and its ensembles the gfs ensembles are a bit less supportive of a strong or a super massive system it's still a snowstorm that would be weren't talking there's maybe not as much but overall you know <clears throat> the confidence is still very, very, um, very um, high on a storm occurring. I just don't, again, no one really knows exactly which model has a better handling over it. And the models are constantly changing. <clears throat> so by tomorrow, this thing may be even stronger or weaker or really relatively unchanged with the main headline of a historic system heading its way. So, yes. Um, and, you know, we'll start <clears throat> getting in on some of these um, models like the NAM, which are high-res models. They're very short range, and we start getting a very good picture of what may come. And just to let you know, we are starting to get the first uh, kind of few hours of the system in the NAM, which is an 84-hour uh, model. And you can see this is what it looks like at hour 78, 81, 84. You can see that, in other words, this thing is looking more of what the European ensemble support rather than what the GFS, which is just clipping the main area. Um, and you can see that this, this thing's massive. I mean, it shows snow all the way into North Car uh, South Carolina with the NAM version of this. RDPS, high res Canadian, uh, if you recall, Canadian is also very aggressive with this. I again, it shows a strong system in a very similar situation or a solution to the Canadian. It shows again a system moving on to the shore. So, yes, um, you know, big system, a lot of things to talk about. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something new, and we'll catch you all in the next episode. See ya. Bye.